but we're going to start at the beginning. So let's go ahead and make sure our trails.module file is open. And let's go ahead and open the trails.module.01 callstack.step file. And we're going to copy this file and we're going to paste it over the entire contents of the trails.module file. Okay, you'll see that this file is significantly simpler and I just saved it. So now this will run when our pages load. All this contains is a call to four different hooks. We have hook init, hook permission, hook menu, and hook cron. Now these are all blank except for a line to return. And I've added this line to each one so that we can use a debugger to trace the function calls that led to this point in the execution process. So the goal here is to stop the page from processing and see how each hook is called. There are several methods that Drupal core uses to initialize hooks. And so I want to take a look at each one. They're actually pretty simple. So once you know this, you'll know how hooks work and you'll know how to look for hooks and eventually how to implement them yourself in your own modules. So what I'm going to do is use a debugger called xdebug, which integrates with certain IDEs or integrated development environments. I'm using Komodo IDE, but you can also use a free IDE called Eclipse, which also integrates with xdebug and is cross-platform. So it'll work on Mac, Windows, and Linux. What xdebug allows us to do is not only stop the execution of the process and look at the call stack or the list of functions that led to this point in the execution, but we can also take a look at variables and what values each one of them hold in a very easy to use, expandable, collapsible format. So this can be very useful for debugging your own modules or investigating how Drupal works. If you don't have an IDE, that you can use xdebug with, there's a couple other options that I've listed here. If you're going to use just PHP, you can use print r and then a function called debug backtrace. If you can get a little bit more complex, go ahead and install the devel module, which is a suite of development tools for Drupal, and use a function called ddebug backtrace. And this will do the same thing as the line above except it will output it in a collapsible format so it's a lot easier to read. Because xdebug is integrated with the development environment, I can jump directly to function calls straight from the call stack. So this allows us to take a look at the code right away, whereas if you're using these methods above, you'll have to manually open up the files and navigate to the lines that are specified in the output. So let's go ahead and look first at trails underscore init. So this is an implementation of hook init and hook init is called on every page load and is a common place to add things like JavaScript files or CSS files or to execute code that needs to be executed on every single page. So what I'm going to do is set a breakpoint here by clicking this margin and adding this hexagon stop sign shape. And this means that when xdebug is on, that we'll stop right here and be able to take a look at what's led up to this point. I'm going to jump to Firefox and I'm going to make sure that this little icon down here in the lower right hand corner has a little red stop sign on it as well. This is a little add-on to Firefox called EasyX Debug and it allows us to start and stop a debug session just by clicking this button. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page you may have noticed at the bottom of my screen that the Komodo icon jumped up. That means that we're stopped and we can take a look at the call stack. So right now we're stopped in the middle and we can use these, this set of tools here to navigate forward through the process or we can stop navigating through the process and just let it run all the way through. All we want to do is take a step back and look at the calls to this function and see how our trails underscore init function came to be called. So we're going to click on the call stack tab here. Now this is actually a pretty short stack. 
there's only six functions that are being called here, and these are the functions that led up to this point. This is pretty natural because hook init runs pretty early on in the Drupal execution process. So if we want to take a step back up, this line here tells us what called our trails init function directly. And it's this function called call user func array, which is actually a PHP function. Now you'll see this if you use a debugger to, to look at a call stack quite a bit. What call user func array does is allow you to execute a function by not actually executing it directly, but passing the function name as well as any arguments that need to be passed to the function to a separate function. So this means that if you have the function name stored in a variable, you can go ahead and execute it by calling user func array. Normally, when you double click on a line in the call stack, it'll jump you to the point in the code where this line was executed. But because call user func array is a PHP function, there's no point in the source code that it will jump to, so it will just leap to line zero, which doesn't actually exist. So let's go to the next line, which is actually in module.inc, line 768, and the function being called is module invoke all. This is where the magic happens. So if we take a step up and take a look at this line by line, in module invoke all, the function, our first line is args equals func get args. So this will take everything that gets passed to module invoke all and puts it in an array that we can use. Hook then is specified as the first item in the args array. So hook is actually going to be the name of the function. So when we see module invoke all being called, and we'll take a look at this as we step up one more line into common.inc here, we'll see that the first argument being passed to it is the name of the hook, which should be init, I-N-I-T. This next line unsets that first item in the arguments array, just to keep it clean, and then we initialize a return array, and now we go through a loop for each, and we're calling module implements, and then the name of the hook, as module. So what this does is it calls a function called module implements, and this function returns an array of modules that implement this hook. So for example, since we just called hook init, it's checking to see if any other modules call hook init, including our own, and it returns a list of those modules. And then it's grabbing that as module. So when it gets to our trails module, it will pass the name trails as the module variable. Now this next line forms our function name. And the function is the name of the module, underscore, and a hook. Now this will look familiar because this is how hooks are shaped. When we're looking at how hooks are implemented, it's always the name of the module, and underscore, and the name of the hook. The next line checks to make sure that this function actually exists. And the next line is where our function is actually called. And the result is call user func array, the name of the function, which will be hook underscore init. In our case, it's trails underscore init, and then any arguments that are passed to it. So the result variable pulls back any data that gets returned. For hook init, we're not returning any data, we're just executing some process. But in future hooks that we look at, we'll see that we add some data to a variable that gets returned, including, for example, hook menu. Now let's go ahead and step one more step back up the call stack to common.inc line 4844 in Drupal bootstrap full. Now whenever you see Drupal bootstrap, this is the collection of code that gets run on every page load to initialize all of the major processes in Drupal. So we see this line here, module invoke all, and then the quotes in it. So if we wanted to create our own hook function, this is the only line that we would actually need to add to our module, module invoke all, and then the name of the hook. That's pretty dang simple. Now we're gonna take a look at a few more hooks, and all of the others have a similar type of structure, but this is the simplest of them all. So let's go ahead and jump back to our trails module, and we'll go ahead and release the debug process by clicking the detach button. Now this allows our page to continue loading. 